Hi guys, it is a gray gloomy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a Sunday afternoon, September 25th, 2022, and uh, I just did my full rant for this Sunday, but I just want to take a couple of minutes to uh, respond to a comment that I got from my Manga Bay Roundup, and I've had and I've had this comment many times, and this is from uh, obviously some uh, uh, lefty offended offended by my obviously uh, sarcastic use of the term noble savage. You know, part of what I do is try to. Uh, explode the myth of the noble savage. So uh, I was in, in the Manga Bay article that it was referring to uh, Manga Bay was reporting on up there in uh, British Columbia that uh, you know, into protecting old growth forest and about how there is uh, a, a big division among the First Nations people there because uh, a lot of the tribes up there make their money off of logging old growth forest. So, uh, the, the, you know, the noble savages are, uh, you know, it's having to decide what's more important to them, old growth forest or more money. And, you know, they're people, they're humans. Uh, First Nations, Second Nations, whatever. Uh, and so that's what I was making a comment and I also, uh, suggested that people might want to look up here in our own country logging in the Tongass National Forest up there in Alaska, which I'm pretty sure is our biggest uh, national forest and uh, biggest stretch of old growth, how Native Americans, the, the misnamed uh, <laughs> oxymoronic uh, contradiction in terms Native Amer There are no Native Americans. There are only invasive Americans. Okay, so the first invasive Americans uh, up there in Alaska are, if you want to see what they look like, look up logging in, in Tongass National Forest. Uh, it goes on and on. So uh, there is this long comment that uh, from uh, Ask the Animals uh, in regards to your noble savages, there is a push by industrialized Native Americans tribal interests to go into Yellowstone and hunt endangered genetically pure bison. You can find this long comment. I appreciate that info, but that's not... I'm talking about the comment next to that one from a fellow. This is a comment with two thumbs up. This is from John Thornley, I guess. This is what John Thornley has to say. <clears throat> Maybe I, I am just a stupid old fool, but is it really cool to call people savages? Even if, as you say, they are the noble type, not just the savage type. Maybe I am oversensitive and I do realize it might be a joke, but I am not sure it is all that nice to call indigenous people savages 
of any description, you may abuse me in your own good time. Two thumbs up. So this is my comment. This is my abuse to John Thornley. <clears throat> I gave up being cool decades ago. And I guess I can add I gave up being nice. Uh, I gave up worrying about offending people. I guess after I read the collected works of Carlos Castaneda uh, three times from beginning to end is when uh, back in the late 90s is when I gave up uh, being cool and I can still consider myself a nice guy but I gave up being concerned about offending people by speaking the truth. Okay? And I, I call it as I see it, and I am quite sure that a lot of the stuff coming out my mouth is not cool and not nice. I make no apologies for it. But anyway, let me start over. I gave up being cool decades ago. Now I am just honest. Every human being on the planet is a bloodthirsty savage. There are no and never have been any noble savages. Read humans on this planet, period indigenous people. Indigenous people, which in the Western Hemisphere, and for that matter, anywhere outside of Africa, are the single biggest invasive species, read invaders, in the history of the planet. There is nothing indigenous about humans outside of a tiny sliver of Africa, and the few truly indigenous humans left on the planet are every bit the bloodthirsty savages that all of us invaders are. Yes, you are oversensitive. I suggest reading Carlos Castaneda to start getting over it and yourself. Hope that helps, John. Anyway, I am just doing my part to uh, get people to get over the myth of the noble savage. And as I've said before, I was, as much as anybody on this planet, I was a victim of the myth of the noble savage. I, I used to be a lefty snowflake. I, I really did, but I, I know you guys are shocked. And then, of course, I went down to the Amazon rainforest and, and actually met some of these uh, <laughs> Some some of these Amazon Indians, I you know, I went down there and spent four months uh, getting to know uh, some some of uh, these indigenous Amazon Indians, whatever you want to call them, uh, and the noble savage myth flew right out of the window. Okay. Uh, I, anybody suffering from the noble savage myth thinking that uh, because you are an indigenous person that somehow you live in sustainable balance and harmony with this planet, go down to the Amazon rainforest. I was in eastern Peru. That's a good place. The Madre de Dios region, the mother of God, be a good place to start uh, your education. You go down there for four months and hang out with those noble savages, and I assure you, John, uh, 
you will get a rude awakening. I would tell the story about my buddy uh, who drove a school bus on, uh, on an Indian reservation uh, out in California. But uh, I will let you uh, imagine what that story is. I see a chippy. He's right there on the door like that. You go get that chippy like that. Get that chippy. Get that noble chippy. Anyway, I got to run some dead hemlock trees up a mountain before the rains return. Get out there and enjoy being a noble savage while you still can. Bye, guys. Are you getting the chippy or not?